Hey guys, welcome to The Pathless Traveled. My name is Ryan. This channel is all about exploration, documentation, and creation. And today I'm very excited to be sharing with you my favorite lens for the Micro Four Thirds camera system. So here in my hand right now, I have the Voigtlander 17.5 millimeter f0.95 lens. And yes, it is f0.95. And while that might not be exactly practical in most situations, which I will talk about in a bit, um, it definitely helps when we're using this Micro Four Thirds system. As many of you guys know, the system has some trouble in low light situations oftentimes, um, really until the GH5S came along. And so any extra bit of light we can get in through the glass has always been um, a massive upside in a lens. The first thing that you notice about this lens when you take it out of the box is the build quality. It is just so solid, full metal construction, um, metal lens hood. The only thing that's plastic is, is the cap that comes with it and it just feels like a tank. It's weighty. It definitely adds a bit of weight to your camera body and um, it's a fully manual lens. The, the focus ring and the aperture ring are super smooth. The aperture ring can be declicked um, so you can get super smooth uh, changes in aperture so no kind of um, hard stops of light coming out of your image. You can change it nice and smoothly if you'd like to um, and everything is just super smooth. If you are looking to use a set of Voigtlanders for actual cinema, for making movies, which people do, you can quite easily get some um, adapter rings to be able to put a follow focus onto these lenses as well. When you have this lens at f0.95, you're gonna get a lot of light in. So if you absolutely need to go to that super, super shallow depth of field to get that extra light in, it can be it can be totally useful, especially you know if it's a wide shot. You're using this lens, the 17.5, which is definitely a wider lens. If it's kind of a wider shot, you can get away with not having you know everything totally in focus. But if you are focusing on something really small and really close up, which you can do with this lens, it's got a super super almost macro. Um, minimum focusing distance, it can focus as close as six inches away from, from an object. So you can get some really, really cool close-up shots with this. And at f0.95, the depth of field is razor thin, so you can get some really cool dreamy effects with this lens. But with that said, I mostly find this lens usable between f1.4 and f2.8. That's kind of the sweet spot for me where I am taking advantage of the light that this lens is able to let in, but also making sure that I can nail focus. When people talk about Voigtlander lenses, you often hear them talk about the look, the Voigtlander look or the feel they give off, the cinematic vibe. And I totally agree. And until you shoot with one of these lenses, you won't really know what that means. But there's a certain creamy look that you get from these lenses that kind of washes out the image a little bit. And you might say, oh, that, you know, I might not want that. But with these cameras, like right now I'm shooting on the GH5 and it produces such a sharp image that sometimes it can be off-putting if you are looking for a more old school or filmic feel. So having a lens like this and putting it at some of the lower apertures can really kind of smooth out um, the image, especially if you're doing close-ups portraits. In fact, right now, I am shooting the second angle with the Voigtlander 42.5 f0.95. So that second angle hopefully will give you guys a bit of a vibe for um, what that looks like when you have it close up um, for an interview setting or something like that. And these two lenses together just make the best pair. I've had the 17.5 for maybe six or eight months now, and I just got the 42.5 about maybe a month ago, and I've been loving them as a team. They are inseparable, they complement each other perfectly. The 17.5 for the wider shots and uh, the 42.5 for those closer shots. It's just an awesome pair. 
So hopefully that gives you guys an idea about what this lens is all about. I'm going to leave you now with a short film that I made using entirely just the 17.5, except for two shots, which you'll probably be able to pick out pretty easily, which were with the Panasonic 12-35 f2.8. But every other shot in this film was shot with this lens. And uh, I really like how it turned out. Just a fun film with a few mates, nothing serious. Uh, so check that out. Five of Bordeaux's top connoisseurs gather to test the integrity of four blends from across the globe. Yuck! Merde! Putain, il est bouchonné Mais c'est dégueulasse Disturbing Disgusting Horrible. Dog shit. The first rewind I have left the connoisseurs outraged. But wait, there is one bottle left to try. It is a prize bottle of pride. Pride, a traditional Bordeaux blend comprised of Merlot and Cabernet, aged in French and Canadian oak barrels. Some say it is not possible to produce such a magnificent wine. It is possible. Beautiful. Voila, the love juice strikes again. Pride one. The true bottle blend. Hope you guys enjoyed that film that was shot with the GH5 and this lens as I mentioned and it just pr produces beautiful images as you saw there so hopefully this review has given you a bit of an idea about what you can achieve with this lens what's it, what it's all about by the way it also takes amazing astrophotography photos if you're into that because getting light into the micro four thirds sensor is always a battle as you as you guys know so getting as much light in as we can so here's an astro photo that I took recently with this lens. Pretty cool stuff. I'm really wanting to get my hands on the 10.5 and the 25 millimeter to make the full set because they complement each other so well. One interesting thing about these lenses is that under f1.4 there's a bit of a magenta shift in in the image and it's it's pretty cool and then 
when you get closer to f2 and above it shifts to more of a green tint so that's something to keep in mind um, and kind of just an interesting quirk of these lenses i will be doing a review of the 42.5 very shortly so stay tuned for that and if you guys like this make sure you toss me a like below if you like my content make sure to subscribe i'm doing a lot more tech videos lately along with my regular travel stuff and until next time don't be afraid to take the path less traveled